It was so quiet. It was very quiet. Nothing was moving, not even the water was moving. We were passing twigs. They were all just sitting still as we went on by. Everything's in full bloom. I just, it, it gives such a different feel to the area. You don't feel like you're in a place that has 69,000 residents and massive industry just hundreds of yards away. The town originated because of the river, with the industry on the river, and if it weren't for the Black River, we wouldn't be here like we are today. Well, Lorraine, is the history is, I'm part of it. I was born and raised here, went to school here, and spent many pleasant hours as a youth along the Black River in what we call South Lorraine. I grew up about a block from here, and my husband and I actually built a brand new home a block from here, so we've invested in this old neighborhood. I believe that the river is going to play a very intricate role here in Lorraine, and for me, it's an honor to represent my family and my people, that I could be a part of that. When I was growing up, you know, industry dominated, and if it was dirty, it was dirty. You just accepted that. Well, I think today, people expect that they can have it all. As we revive, we're going to see all the attention brought to the things that are um, significant um, signatures of Lorraine, such as the history of the river. When I was a kid, let's say, you didn't think of going, you know, kayaking up the Black River, nor did you think of be, being able to take a tour of the river or bring, let's say, the Jet Express and taking people for things of that nature up the river, and we're now seeing that. We're seeing fathers, kids, mothers, families uh, down at the river, and we didn't have that opportunity 10 years ago. So I think it helps build community and builds a lot of things that we just didn't have when the river was unusable. This is the story of a city rising in the midst of one of the most fruitful sections of our country. This is Lorraine, Ohio. Here is a natural setting for a thriving community, the meeting place of land and water, two of nature's most bountiful gifts. The history clearly shows that the Black River not emptied into Lake Erie where it does, Lorraine would have never been founded. From the early days of shipbuilding, fishing, shipments of grain, and then later coal, because Lorraine, the Black River forms one of the best natural harbors on the Great Lakes. How many cities in the United States would love to be on the shores of one of the largest bodies of fresh water in the world? Because if you study history, water has always been the center of growth. The city of Lorraine, since it was a steel mill in the 1890s, has given the nation and the world a lot of its uh, economic productivity. Its people have, have worked very, very hard, and it, 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 this river has worked very hard to, to enable all that. You could smell the results of all that industrial productivity. You could see it on your cars, and, and it was just an industrial town. You felt it wherever you went. Our port became one of the, one of the grandest ports on, on the Great Lakes. There was a lot of exporting going on, but there was also a lot of importing of ore here, and ore was, was what was used to, to help make the steel, plus the coal that came up from the southern states. This is where the ore and the iron met to make the steel. The steel making took off, but along with it came some pollution of our, of our waterways here and of our river. Back in about 1965, there was, a, I believe, a county commissioner named Thompson, and he called the Black River the main sewer line to Lake Erie, which essentially it was. Anything that was unwanted was dumped near or in the river, found its way to the river, and just traveled to Lake Erie right past where we're standing right now. In the 1980s, when we first came up to the Black River to monitor it, it was, it, it was an abomination. It had every kind of pollutant that you could, 
you could think of. As, as we've said in the past, it was a witch's brew and there were very, very few fish in the system. And the fish that were in the system were some of the most tolerant species and least desirable species that you would want to see. This river became so bad that it was one of the 43 most polluted sites, water system sites in the Great Lakes. This river was so bad that it was known as the River of Fish Tumors. Well, when I opened my shop 15 years ago, the Black River wasn't even thought of as a fishery. As you walked the river's banks, it was filthy, undesirable, and it became a dump spot for not only businesses in the area, but for residents as well. If somebody would have told me 15, 20 years ago that you're gonna be kayaking on this river, I would have told them you're crazy. There's no way that's gonna even happen. But now, it's, it's come a long way. It's taken a lot of work, it's taken a lot of effort, but there's still a lot of work and effort that's gotta be done. Black River Wrap was the driving force of the restoration of the Lower River. Uh, one of the main things that the Black River Wrap did was it secured the funding to develop a uh, master plan, an ecological or habitat master plan for the Lower River. A master plan is a, a list of projects and concepts trying to achieve a single goal. The single goal was to, to restore the Lower River while not hindering economic development while also being a part of the future of the city of Lorraine. I commend the city of Lorraine for all their actions that they have done to follow the projects of the master plan, but it is uh, the, the guiding force was the Black River Wrap. No one really realizes the, the work that, that they're doing behind the steel mill to rehabitat and refinish the land back there. And, but once we tell someone about it, every time we tell a new group about it, they're like, wow, I didn't know that's happening, that's so amazing. It's amazing that, that we developed a plan and the city took it and followed it and we are seeing such amazing concepts, with amazing restoration potential for the river. It is amazing that we found the funding to get the work done. It is amazing that we've already started to see improvements. People are coming back to the river. This has been one of the largest, longest projects with the fewest flaws that I've seen. Uh, and this goes back to my time working for the city before I became mayor. Uh, it was that good, and that's you know, you know, four or five years ago. So that is something to be said about all the individuals involved and something to be said about how government can come together, can collaborate, can use dollars uh, to make a difference for a community. When I became the utilities director, and we had to decide what the future of the waterfront was gonna look like, at that time, you know, it was really a push towards the future, who are we going to become. We secured a lot of grants and we, we started out with a vision and we were able to work towards that vision. It was born out of looking for solutions and so the culture began to change because this was not, you know, there was no uh, industrial white knight that was going to ride into town. A lot of cities with an industrial base as Lorraine has had, have found over the years that their industrial base has started to erode away. They're just not having the, the industries successful that they used to, and they're not having new industries start up. They have to change their paradigm. They have to look at the river a different way. They have to look at their city a different way. I don't consider that as our back door. That's our front door. This is a front door to our city. You don't want a dirty front door. You want a clean front door. On a restoration project as grand as this scale of the restoring the whole lower river, it was essential to have one master plan. The major focal points of the master plan, that suite of projects, 
were to do things like improve fish habitat along the lower river, to remove all the, those piles and piles of slag that have been sitting there for decades, to uh, get rid of invasive species, to improve everything along the, the lower river so that, that people will want to come to the river, that, that the uh, fish and the birds and everything will want to live there, that people will see this as a focal point of the city of Lorraine. The goal of the master plan from, from the get-go was we are not, we're not here to create a, uh, a nature preserve. We're not here to uh, you know, have, have uh, everyone stay back and, and not touch the river. We are here to create a river that people want to be in, that people want to go to. And, and if we can do that, then people will come to the river and people will beautify the, the stream margins and they will learn how to live with the river without injuring the river. protect the, the river banks and to be able to have the ships be able to dock and offload, they put sheet piling, steel walls on each side of the river in both, in, in many areas of this river. And it protects the river bank from erosion from the big ships going by. And it also provides a hard surface that the ships can dock to. But that provides that no habitat. It's like the fish are living against a wall, which they would be. There's no place to hide, there's no food there. So there's no reason for the fish to want to come in here. But by improving the habitat that the city has done by following the master plan, they're improving sites along the river, little stepping stone sites going up the river where the fish can travel upstream, rest, find something to eat, move upstream, and finally be able to spawn. And then finally, when they're done, go back out to Lake Erie. We're actually sitting on the phase one fish shelf. These are the boulder clusters on top of the shelf. Um, before the fish shelves were here, this was basically a dredged out bathtub, if you will, that's smooth with no physical structure. Fish need structure. They like rocks, they like uh, sand and gravel, they need places of refuge and uh, places for spawning. So in building the fish shelves along the Black River, we've given fish in-stream structure or habitat for them to live on. I own a tackle store here in Sheffield Lake, Ohio, which borders the Black River on the East Bank. Um, as we've seen the quality of the fish improve, where I used to be dependent just on the lake to bring customers to my shop, now we have a year-long fishery right here on the Black River. We have steelhead in the winter, we have crappies in the spring and the fall, as well as great panfish, smallmouth, and largemouth fishing year-round. Now we could actually eat the fish in the river. Uh, years ago, uh, they recommended you didn't even play with it, let alone eat it. So uh, it's, it's really improved. And uh, you know, you've got to uh, uh, contribute a lot to the, to the EPA and the government and the city, and Port Authority's done their part. Fishermen at that site were yelling to people up on shore, why is the fishing so good here now? So we immediately went back and got a fish crew out. And we found that the Black River Landing, which is a constructed site, a man-made site in the river, scored as high as the best natural sites that we have seen in this lower Black River. So we have a history that these fish shelves work. Slag is a steel mill processing byproduct and it has been deposited on the banks of the Black River now for over a hundred years. To remove the slag off the river banks then allows the natural ecology to regrow. This used to be two gigantic piles of lime, which is also a byproduct of the steel mill processing, as well as there was a pile of slag in this area. As you can see, we've taken all of that out of here 
and we put down topsoil and we planted it with native grasses and trees. We have six miles of old industry on this river. So where we have cleaned up one and a half million cubic yards of slag, there's probably five to 10 times that much slag still to be moved and recycled. So the monumental task really has just begun and there's still a lot more to do. Once we remove this slag, we've planted grasses and shrubs and trees. And ideally, um, over the next century, the entire riparian corridor along the river would be forested habitat. We moved a million cubic yards out of this floodplain area. It's about 23 acres that you're looking at down on the floodplain. And we restored it to a lot of vernal pool wetland type of habitat. The grasses filter the runoff, the rainwater, and the water coming off of the slag piles. So that floodplain acts as a big filter for cleaning water too. Once the, the awareness keeps growing about what we're doing out here with the restoration efforts, and, and, and the locals learn more about the, this asset in their backyard, that, that they're, it'll keep going, that this, this project is just the beginning. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Welcome aboard, sir. Thank you. Sir, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, too. Well, it'll be a fun trip. Basically, you have the sand and gravel, and at the steel plant, we have the iron ore, which is obviously used to produce steel. But the room is undergoing a change dramatic change. The changes are phenomenal. Uh, where once we had the, again the fish with the tumors, we now have bass on the river. We now have improved water quality as a whole with a lot of wildlife. We have eagle along the river. We have osprey along the river. We have the same beaver and mink and a lot of blue heron. Uh, we have a heron or rookery up the river and we have the comorants now and the wildlife has changed significantly. We've already seen just monumental number increases in great blue heron and cormorants on the river. Those are two, two birds that, are, that rely on fish to eat. The more fish, the more cormorants. We're finding the more fish, the more great blue heron. And we're, the numbers are just exploding out there. Right now we've seen almost every time we go up the river, we've seen an eagle go by. And those are mainly fish-based predators. So as the fish improve, the rest of the, the um, environment improves. Lorraine County is currently working on a project where they're employing 20 unemployed laborers to remove invasive species along the lower six miles of the Black River. Invasive species, invasive plant species are a problem because they choke out the native plants. They are very aggressive and outcompete the plants that are supposed to be here. And what that does is basically results in a community that is a monotypic stand of one plant that results in a decreased diversity of wildlife, fish, and bird species as well. So it decreases the, the quality of the overall river ecosystem. The project is intending to treat and remove four different invasive species. The predominant one is Phragmites or common reed. It's a very tall grass. It grows from 10 to 20 feet tall and it completely overtakes an area. It spreads by its roots and sends up new stalks from the root system, which means that it can spread rapidly without having to send out any seeds and it can quickly take over large areas in a short amount of time. We actually worked with uh, Job and Family Services County agency in order to uh, bring in long-term unemployed people and to be able to provide them with an opportunity to work and to actually earn a paycheck, redevelop a work history, to 
be able to hopefully as the economy improves go back into a regular uh, private sector job. The guys have been incredible. Uh, they've really worked hard. Conditions have been rough. Weather this year has not been overly cooperative. But with that being said, they've really uh, taken to the task. Started with crew of 23, we're about 16 now, but we've lost five of them to full-time jobs. And so at the end of the day, we look at that as kind of graduation. All right, guys, by the way. We call ourselves the Frag Boys, and we're cutting down Frag Mighty, so we picked that up about a month ago. <laughs> I recently lost my job at a fast food place, but luckily it just came you know, right after, so I was in good position for that. I know it'll look good on a resume, so you know, I'm hoping that after this, hopefully get another city job. The city is working on, with the county on a long-term maintenance strategy for this part of the river so that they can come back for the long term, years down the road, to come back as needed to spot treat these areas and make sure that, that they're covered from uh, any invasives in the future. We are on Caroline Avenue. This used to be my old home. When I was growing up, the river did not have a good reputation at all. And I remember one time we were playing ball and, and, and our big beach ball went into the water and I wanted to go in there and get it. My dad said, no, 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 you can't get in that river. It's filthy. And I had a, with sad eyes, I had to watch the ball float away. To think about it now, here I am going to be 49 years old. The amazing things that are, are happening in the river. I could go swimming now. My daughters can go swimming in there. I couldn't do it as a kid. The Puerto Ricans then came and they worked in the steel mill and they were able to build a legacy. Both my grandfathers worked here in the steel mill and that's really why we're here. We were here for, because of the steel mill. Now what about us that are descendants of them? What legacies can we build for the future for our children, grandchildren and great grandchildren? What legacy can we be? And that's where I believe the Black River is a part of it. I've been the Met with the Metro Parks now for 10 years, and since then, uh, a lot of people have used or be, be, are starting to use the river a lot more. I see a lot of more elderly or retired people out coming out and kayaking. So we're seeing young and old and family, a lot of families coming out using our kayak points. In the first session, we learned that we wanted to lean forward and reach for the feet, grab the water out here, I'm kind of an outdoors man, I'm kind of a Clark Griswold kind of guy. Fortunately, I have some good people to work with uh, that when I go camping with. Uh, and I'm here checking out a kayak, uh, might be investing in one to get some exercise. We are Lorain County Kayak Paddle Sports Group and we are water enthusiasts, we love nature, and we want to make the river suitable to paddle on again. Right now it's, it's not the cleanest that it's ever been, and we want everyone to enjoy their time out on the river. What we'll see today is still up in the air. We really, this is something completely new to us. What we plan on seeing is uh, a lot of people out lending a hand. I think we'll see uh, over 200 people today, and hopefully pull about uh, 5,000 pounds of trash out of the river. 50 yards, not even from the kayak launch of the Loring County Metro Parks, right there's a big ginormous truck axle with tires. Every time we put in there, every time everybody puts in there, they have to see it. And it's not how you want to say, hey, welcome to the Black River. Being involved with the Black River cleanup a couple of weeks ago with Loco Yaks was a really eye-opening experience, just seeing the um, initiative and the passion that people have, um, younger people, to turn their city around, um, make it a more enjoyable place to live and make it the sort of uh, space that we want to stay and move it in a direction that we all want it to go. We have completed six projects now 
And with those projects, we have been able to move one and a half million cubic yards of slag out of the floodplain. We've also restored 6,000 linear feet of stream banks, another 6,000 linear feet of fish shelves, over 80 acres of riparian preservation, including the Heron Rookery and the new floodplain area. There's still some more pockets, especially up along the, um, probably from mile 2.1 up to, up to mile 5, where, where it was heavily impacted by all the industrial operations from the steel mill. That can go on for many, many years. But I think most of it's at a point where, you know, let's, let's start having fun and using it and, and um, uh, get some economic activity going down here, and um, we're at that stage. I see it paying back. First of all, you have a healthy river. That's, that's important. Now you have sport fishing on the river. You also have development occurring along the river. Just improvement of quality of life. Lorraine has done a wonderful job of cleanup. They've done a wonderful job of adding arts, crafts, and local grown products and things to the community. Unfortunately, people aren't traveling to our community to find that out. The river being clean gives them a reason to come here and enjoy everything we have to offer. The early settlers used this as a means of transportation and survival. It, there's no reason we can't use it for the same thing, for transportation and or survival. Maybe not necessarily to feed off the fish that come out of it, but to feed the economy. The river is right next to downtown Lorraine, so if people come down to the river, they're going, some of them of course are going to, to venture into downtown Lorraine and, and buy supplies for their boats or buy food or, or you know, stop at the restaurants, and stop at the little shop. There's this notion that business and environment cannot go together. I think with what we're doing here, they can come together because improving the environment, improving uh, the health of the river and our lake will come together and allow us to be successful at attracting business. This is going to come back and it's going to be a beautiful city one day. So I decided I wanted to be part of that and I purchased this building and I'm restoring it and then I'm purchasing other buildings in the neighborhood here and starting to fix them up. I have 30 condominium units here where the people in, in two minutes can walk down to a beautiful trail and walk along the river. That's pretty hard to do when you're in a major city, but we have it right here, it's so close. Well, I just never seen so much lake property and the beautiful park we got down here that is so underutilized. And all this space here, when you're a builder, is, it leaves you a lot of desire to take something and do something with it. Let's focus on the good stuff. What good stuff is coming out of Lorraine? You know, which a lot of times people's mindsets can, um, it can affect them to say, I don't want to go downtown because there's nothing good down there. Well, guess what? There's good stuff that's getting ready to happen downtown Lorraine so people can come out and enjoy themselves and maybe change that mindset so people can want to get more involved in what the city is doing and see the economic development that's happening. That's, that's really great. When you go to other cities along the Great Lakes and, and you see what they've been able to do, and it's always been a struggle in transforming our industrial cities into to a place where people want to come for tourism, I would like to see our lakefront developed into something that's going to attract people to come here for recreation, possibly for a year-round use, maybe some hotels or restaurants or a great living space. I think the Clean River is a cog in this wheel. I had the opportunity a few years ago to go to several communities in Wisconsin, Kenosha, Sheboygan, and Racine. And those communities were very similar to Lorraine, that's why we went there. Population size, uh, as well as the fact that they were on the waterfronts, they also were hurt dramatically in the 80s and early 90s by the downturn in the economy. They were basically, in many cases, blue-collar communities and tremendous job loss. But they've turned around and now they've become major areas and that's what I'd love to see for Lane. It's really been the history that we've had to get past and, and the current conditions in, in Lorraine in the Lorraine area are just perfect for what we're trying to accomplish here. 
just to see a change in attitude about the river, everything else will come. Clean water brings, you know, in a good fishery, a healthy place for outdoor activity. All the other things will come with it. I would like to see the river as, as one of the main places in Ohio to go vacation. Instead of doing a staycation at Cedar Point or at one of the water parks, do it right here on the river and hang out outside and enjoy it with your paddles and find a camping spot or have lunch in the afternoon at a restaurant outside, anything. Just enjoy everything we have about it. And I hope I can see the day in my lifetime where uh, Lorraine's waterfront uh, would be comparable to maybe Vermilion or, or Euron and, and give, generate a lot more commerce. I, I think we're moving in that direction. I don't think we're there yet. It's all piece by piece coming together to improve the overall city. And I think we have the ability with projects such as uh, the Black River Restoration in conjunction with other projects we're doing to transform this community. I just want to change the way people think. I want them to realize the beauty that we have here. I mean, right across this river I'm looking at industry, but as soon as you go around this turn, you're going to start seeing wildlife like there's no tomorrow. I want people to experience this and realize what a good thing we've got here, and it's in the city of Lorraine. It doesn't look like Lorraine when you kayak out here. It's, it's a totally different side of the city that most people wouldn't expect. You got industry right there, so you know people are working, and to be out on the river enjoying what God gave us, you know, it's kind of cool. As important as the river has been, it will be more important in the years to come. As long as we value the river, the best may be yet to come, but it's up to us.